The NASA astronauts who had been stuck aboard the International Space Station for months have finally returned to Earth safely. And this has turned out to be one of the wildest stories in recent space history. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sunita Suni Williams were only supposed to spend eight days in space after launching aboard Boeing's Starliner capsule. That was the plan. Fly up, dock with the International Space Station, run a short series of tests, and come back home within just over a week. But that plan quickly fell apart. Due to technical problems with the Starliner spacecraft, including multiple helium leaks and issues with its thrusters, the return kept getting delayed again and again. What was meant to be a quick round-trip mission stretched into more than three months. And when it finally came time for them to return home, they didn't do it aboard the same spacecraft they arrived in. Instead of coming back in Boeing's Starliner, they returned in SpaceX's Crew Dragon. That alone made history. For the first time, astronauts launched aboard one company's vehicle and came back in another's. Wilmore and Sunita, Suni Williams, had originally launched aboard Boeing Starliner on June 5, 2024, for what was meant to be a short demonstration flight. The plan was straightforward. Travel to the International Space Station, spend just over a week conducting tests, and return home. But that simple plan quickly turned into an extended mission filled with unexpected delays and technical issues that kept them in space far longer than intended. Starliner encountered multiple problems, including helium leaks and thruster malfunctions. As a result, NASA had to delay their return multiple times, prioritizing safety and ensuring the vehicle was stable before making the journey back to Earth. Instead of returning on Starliner as planned, NASA made a major decision. Wilmore and Williams would return on SpaceX's Crew Dragon, making them the first astronauts in history to launch on one company's spacecraft and return in another. For Wilmore and Williams, this mission placed them in an exclusive group of astronauts who have flown aboard four different spacecraft. Over their careers, they have traveled in NASA's Space Shuttle, the Russian Soyuz, Boeing Starliner, and SpaceX's Crew Dragon. This makes them uniquely qualified to compare these vehicles and understand how human spaceflight has evolved across different generations of technology and design. Their first experiences with space travel came aboard the space shuttle. Unlike modern capsules, which are small and compact, the shuttle was spacious, capable of carrying up to seven astronauts along with cargo, satellites, and scientific equipment. It had a crew cabin with 65.8 cubic meters of habitable space, far more than any of the other spacecraft they later flew. Wilmore piloted Atlantis mission, while Williams flew on two shuttle missions. Inside, astronauts had room to move, work, and even float freely, making long missions more comfortable. However, despite its advantages, the shuttle had drawbacks. It was extremely expensive to operate, required thousands of personnel for maintenance, and had two fatal disasters, Challenger in 1986 and Columbia in 2003. After Columbia's loss, NASA decided to phase out the shuttle, leaving the U.S. without a way to send astronauts to space. That led to their next spacecraft experience, the Russian Soyuz. After the shuttle program ended in 2011, NASA relied entirely on Soyuz to transport astronauts to and from the International Space Station. But compared to the shuttle, Soyuz was an entirely different experience. It was designed in the 1960s with a focus on reliability and efficiency, rather than comfort or spaciousness. Wilmore and Williams both described Soyuz as cramped, with barely enough room for three astronauts. NASA astronaut Don Pettit, who also flew Soyuz, once described it as so tight that his heels nearly touched his backside when strapped in. Movement was almost impossible. Unlike the shuttle, where astronauts had room to stretch and float, Soyuz required them to remain still for long periods. But what Soyuz lacked in comfort, it made up for in dependability. It had flown over 150 crewed missions and remained the only way to reach the International Space Station for nearly a decade. Its analog controls and simple design made it less prone to software failures and its escape system had a proven track record of saving crews during emergencies. 
However, its landing was notoriously rough. Instead of a runway or an ocean splashdown, Soyuz parachuted into the remote Kazakh steppes, often hitting the ground hard with forces of 4 to 5 Gs. This stark contrast to the shuttle's controlled landings made for a much tougher return to Earth. With NASA seeking to replace its reliance on Soyuz, the commercial crew program selected two companies to develop new spacecraft, Boeing and SpaceX. Starliner was meant to be Boeing's answer to Soyuz, with a more modern design and automated systems. When Wilmore and Williams launched aboard Starliner, it was expected to demonstrate that Boeing could compete with SpaceX's Crew Dragon. However, its development had already been plagued with delays, and once in space, it ran into even more problems. The spacecraft suffered helium leaks and thruster failures that made NASA hesitant to bring the astronauts back in it. Days turned into weeks and then months as engineers worked to assess whether it was safe enough for re-entry. The delay was so significant that NASA ultimately decided to use Crew Dragon instead, a major blow to Boeing's efforts in human spaceflight. Their unexpected return in Crew Dragon gave them a direct comparison between Boeing's and SpaceX's spacecraft. Crew Dragon was developed with a completely different philosophy from Starliner. While both vehicles are reusable and feature touchscreen controls, Dragon is fully autonomous, requiring little input from astronauts during docking and undocking. It also features a more modern interior, designed to be spacious enough for its small crew, but with a focus on comfort. Unlike Soyuz and Starliner, which return to Earth by landing on solid ground, Dragon splashes down in the ocean, creating a softer landing experience. Most importantly, Crew Dragon has a proven track record having flown multiple successful missions, both for NASA and private customers. A single seat aboard Crew Dragon is estimated to cost NASA around $55 million. In contrast, each seat aboard Starliner is estimated at approximately $90 million. That makes Starliner not only more expensive than its direct competitor, Crew Dragon, but also more expensive than Russia's Soyuz, which averaged about $80 million per seat when NASA was purchasing rides from Roscosmos during the post-shuttle years. This is especially problematic considering that one of the main objectives of NASA's commercial crew program was to lower the cost of access to low Earth orbit. When the program was first launched in the early 2010s, it was seen as a way to promote competition between private companies, stimulate innovation, and most importantly, reduce the cost burden on NASA. The agency invested billions in development contracts with both Boeing and SpaceX. Boeing received roughly $4.2 billion in funding, while SpaceX received $2.6 billion. Even though Boeing received significantly more funding, SpaceX has already completed over a dozen successful crewed and cargo missions to the International Space Station, while Boeing's Starliner is still not certified for regular operations. Beyond the per-seat cost, Boeing has also faced mounting internal expenses due to Starliner's delays and repeated test failures. After its first uncrewed flight in 2019 failed to reach the correct orbit due to software issues, Boeing had to fund a second uncrewed test mission out of pocket. That cost the company an estimated $410 million. Additional fixes, software overhauls, safety reviews, and a prolonged development timeline have only added to the growing expenses. Analysts suggest Boeing has spent well over $1.5 billion of its own money on the Starliner program, on top of NASA's funding. And it doesn't stop there. Boeing has also been incurring costs related to keeping its crew and facilities ready, despite constant delays. Each delay means that astronaut training has to be updated or repeated, ground systems must be maintained for longer than expected, and teams have to remain on standby for launches that continue to get pushed back. All of these factors contribute to the ballooning budget of the Starliner project. With these setbacks and growing losses, Boeing has reportedly been considering options for the future of the Starliner program. Internally, there's been discussion about whether continuing to support a program that's yet to deliver on its goals makes financial sense, especially when it continues to lag behind a competitor that's already dominating the field. Some reports suggest Boeing is actively looking for ways to sell off parts of its space program.
if Boeing finds a buyer, or if NASA shifts more resources to SpaceX and potentially other upcoming players like Sierra Space or Blue Origin, there's a real possibility that the Starliner program could be scaled back or even canceled entirely after fulfilling its remaining obligations to NASA. Boeing has said it will fly up to six operational Starliner missions as part of its current contract, but if the delays and cost overruns continue, that number could be reduced, especially if NASA's confidence in the program continues to decline. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.